60 minutes overtime. People said, are you going to die with crocodiles? I said, no way. Absolutely no way. I'd send my best person down. I keep telling people I know how to die, but the truth is I really don't know how to die. I have no idea what all these things are. I sent Anderson an email and said, dive in with crocodiles, what do you think? And within five seconds, I got a note back saying, absolutely. I don't think he's human, because there's no fear there at all. He loves to take himself right to the edge. Can I ride a croc? Have you guys done that? <laughs> My producers on this story were Michael Gavshon and Paul Bellinger. Yeah, 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 here he comes. I've worked in a number of, of, of stories around the world with them. I went diving with great white sharks with them. When Anderson dived with great white sharks, it was very different because Anderson and the divers could see the sharks come in their way. Diving with great white sharks felt like a much more controlled environment. But in this case, it was very low visibility, and a, a crocodile could appear from anywhere. I didn't even know it was possible to dive with them. Every lesson I've always gotten is you stay away from crocodiles. We shot the story in the Okavanga Delta in Botswana. I think that that spot is probably the most beautiful place I've ever seen. It's an extraordinary, pristine area, hundreds of miles of winding waterways, incredible vegetation and animal life. Hey, I'm Anderson. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, Andy, nice to meet you. Hey, thanks. Welcome. It's beautiful. Brad and Andy are, are wildlife filmmakers. Okay. Their specialty these days is diving with crocodiles. There he is, straight ahead of us. Look here, behind you, behind you, quickly, Ian. In the water, in the water. The fact that you wear crocs, is that an inside joke? <laughs> <laughs> They're just very practical. They're great, uh, great shoes. <laughs> I just realize you all walk around in crocs all day. As soon as there's a splash in the water and it sees something in the water, it will be alerted. The surface is where crocodiles kill you. They lurk just underneath the surface of the water. That's where they attack. But when you're diving with them, you want to get off the surface as quickly as possible. I can still change your mind. I can still change my mind? Hmm. Can I still change my mind? Let's go. Wow, the current is incredibly strong here. Our first dive was really bad. I mean, our first dive was, was dangerous. Now visibility is only about four or five feet. This is where it gets very, very risky. There's so much submerged debris of trees and logs, branches. It's really like an underwater obstacle course. Well, the current was so fast and there was so much debris underwater. So you had no idea if there were crocodiles there or not. Uh, that was exhilarating. I'll tell you what, you are a brave man. It was fun, I and mean, it was cool. <laughs> if that was my first dive in the Delta, I would never it ever was cool. go in again. I mean, visually, it was like being an alien or something. I mean, I'm sure there were crocodiles around, but he, he definitely didn't see anything. <sighs> Nothing. <sighs> no crocodiles. The first couple dives we did, we, we didn't come upon any crocodiles. <laughs> Where were these crocs? Well, 60 minutes over time. This is what you call a producing challenge when you're doing a piece about crocodiles and yet you can't actually find any crocodiles. Michael Gavshon, producer, produce some crocodiles for us, please. I've got some up my, <laughs> my sleeve. The producers are getting nervous that it's not going to happen. <sighs> no crocodiles. Okay, Anderson. Still no croc. I need another four or five dives. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> We've seen a couple on the surface, but now we're just breaking for lunch. And we're having a booty. You know, it's expensive to go there. There were, you know, a crew of six or seven people. Anderson was there, and uh, there was nothing. There were no crocs. It was quite unnerving. Anderson forgot his fence. It wasn't until we really started going in these underwater caves that we found this group of crocodiles. And it's very eerie, it's very claustrophobic. You know there are crocodiles inside there, but it's so pitch black you can't see. I think the possibility that Anderson might have been eaten was a, a priority for us. I mean, it was something that everyone feared. We had initially hoped to have communications between the divers and so us on the boat, up. but the crocs were actually quite freaked out by the transmission of sound. So we had absolutely no communications at all. From the boat, all you're doing is you're looking out over the water and you see these bubbles coming up all over the place. We had absolutely no clue as to what was going on, and that was terrifying. 
All Anderson had to protect himself was this iron rod. No weapons, no, no, nothing at all. I would hazard a guess that we were more terrified than Anderson was. He was having a whale of a time. Anderson comes up face to face with this one crocodile and all this crocodile's got to do is lunge at him. Literally looking at it right in the face, staring at it face to face. Wow, okay. There it is. It's right there. I mean, you can reach out and touch it. He should have been petrified and he wasn't. Wow, that was amazing. God, we got right, right, I was right on top of it. He's done a lot of pretty crazy things in his life, but this really does take the cake. You want to get as close as possible. There's something incredibly captivating about being so close to these animals. I don't think he has any particular affection for crocodiles. I want to do it again. Once he saw one croc, he wanted to go back and he wanted to go back again. So I said, forget it, we don't have to do more. That's fine. No, Anderson said, let's go down, let's go down for more. It is easy to lose perspective on, okay, we got enough. We don't need to keep, you know, rolling the dice on this one. Paul Bellinger and I had to say to him, listen, Anderson, we've got enough. Let's go. Okay, there's a bit of a hole now. We may as well get you out of there. Oh, really? Okay. You can only dive so many times a day. It becomes really physically uh, exhausting after a while because the water is very cold. The current is moving incredibly fast. You're sucking up oxygen. I mean, your heart is pounding. It's not like diving any, anywhere else in the world that I've ever dived. You're back, Anderson. Mm. Mm. Good snooze. <laughs> I genuinely think that Anderson is an adventurer. He's a good worker. He has an incredible curiosity and a fearlessness, which I, I have never encountered ever before.